I'm JJ Barnes and this is Jonathan McKinney. Hello. And you are watching another episode of Writing Advice with JJ and Jonathan. Today we're going to be doing a video about what is conflict okay because if you've been watching our videos for a while or any other writing advice videos that there are out there it's likely you'll have heard the term conflict um it is something that we say a lot it's something that we pretty much talk about every video yeah um i think there's no story without conflict right so, so we thought uh, it's probably a good idea to do a video that just is basically like a crash course what is conflict? Okay, so first of all though, um, because it's Christmas, we are drinking a little Baileys today. So cheers if you're able to drink a little Baileys too. And um, yeah, let's have a drink. 100% Christmas is coming, baby. It's, it's here. <laughs> we haven't got our decorations up yet, but maybe next video we will. Um, or at least next batch of videos, because we're going to put it up soon. So Yeah. Right. Right, so what is conflict so, in your mind? Conflict is in my mind when what your character wants isn't easy to get <laughs> it is when they want something and whatever it is it might be to say something in a room it might be to get something to eat you know something really simple it might be to steer a conversation in a certain way or it might be something big like save the world yeah conflict is when something is in the way it is when something or someone is bumping heads with it yeah, it's an I want and I can't have. Yeah. Um, at its most sort of essential point, it's I want and I can't have. Yeah, exactly. You, there's something you your character wants and for some reason something is in the way of it. Yeah, and it should be for the point of, for the purpose of storytelling, it should be something attainable, not necessarily easily. It shouldn't be I want, you know, a million pounds because unless that is attainable for you or the character in your story, it's not a good want. Yeah. Um, I also would like a million pounds. Yes, if you <laughs> have a million pounds. But it's not something that I'm sort of like in the next few days hoping to accomplish. No, so there's no story about <laughs> how no JJ story. won a million pounds. What I'll say is, because it's very easy to, to write without conflict. Not write well without conflict, but a lot of people, and myself included, especially when I first started writing, before I, you know, made that transition to actually getting a book and like out and all that sort of stuff i would write because i've always written and i love to write okay so i would write and i would write characters having conversations i would write characters doing things right they would be in the scenes where they would be living and it could be very believable living and it could be very in terms of sentence and characterization very well written living but there was no story there has to be a reason you are jumping into this character's life at this moment. Right. And the reason you're jumping into this character's life at this moment is because of the conflict. Because before the story starts, they might just be living a normal life. And that's fine. They're there. But we don't want to see that because it's not interesting. <coughs> One of the things that I think is worth noting is day-to-day -day life, as I say, isn't very interesting. Unless you're writing a soap opera. Soap operas are chronicling day-to-day -day lives of a, a cast of people. And it's not jumping in at this point because this conflict is happening and you're telling the story of them seeking out a thing. You are watching their everyday life. Which is why soaps are both very, very popular and very, very unbelievable. Because they, they are, are cramming conflict constantly they they rely on melodrama which is um larger than life in, it's in a you know in a setting that is supposed to be as you say life you, you you've know, got the, the a shop size and life. a pub and some houses and a school and generally generally your day-to-day -day life isn't that conflict riddle like we'll have conflict with our kids I mean, a yeah, lot of conflict I, with our kids. I would argue that our lives at the moment are yeah. fairly. You can <laughs> you know, tell a good soap opera about us. Yeah, but the, the point. Kids to go to sleep, but yeah, the, but the point is, generally, <coughs> day to day life, it might have conflict in a scene level. Like you disagree about what takeaway you're gonna get, 
you know but yeah, you but haven't in, got a big story but but in soap soaps, operas they, they have a lot of cheating because that's an obvious kind of it's a conflict conflict if you've got someone having an affair you've got um, a lot of stories and I haven't watched soap operas for a long time but from memory sometimes crazy elaborate things about a murder and then everybody's wondering who committed the murder and, because um, if you're telling day-to-day -day life if you don't ram it with conflict, it will be boring. Which is why m stories that aren't soaps, that are films, our books, our TV shows, TV shows in a different way, but you know, books yeah. and films specifically, you are jumping into that character's life at that point because okay. you're jumping in to witness that conflict. So, a lot of TV shows that are not soap operas, right? Concept TV shows, which is pretty much everything that you're probably watching that isn't a soap opera, right? So, just name any kind of um, concept. Supernatural. Supernatural. So, Supernatural has a sort of con a conflict generator yeah. as a concept that's crucial to the show. And it starts with the end of Sam's mundane life going to college because his girlfriend is murdered by the same demon that killed his mother. You jump and in so, at that point. And they quickly set up that Sam and Dean are going to go from town to town looking into paranormal Following their goings father's on. journal. Yeah, and that's the kind of Peter Rabbit long form storytelling. Yeah. But the, the every episode, the conflict generator gives you, oh, I've been reading the paper, there's a, you know, a, I don't know, a, a Paloma in... Uh, in Wisconsin or whatever yeah. the fuck and so off they go and in the car you go off um, and each episode has a conflict but so, you don't watch Sam and Dean just sitting in a pizza shop and no. then go into the movies and going home and going to bed because nobody cares so, nobody cares about that so name another one just any anything that's not a soap opera Firefly Firefly okay so um, they uh, Mal Reynolds um, owns a spaceship and he is essentially using it to live on and also find work transporting things across the you know this sci-fi environment and um, the episodes are the conflict generator is that he needs to get keep getting another job so every yeah, every, every like, is a do job either yeah. the quest for a job or the uh watching of a job yeah but both of those is conflict you are witnessing an interesting thing you do not spend hours watching um <laughs> mal and book and everybody just but you get some dinner time scenes. Yeah, but, but they always play with the conflict they, anyway. They have scene level conflict and it's not the point. So basically what I'm saying is you're jumping into your character's life at this point. There is a reason. You are not witnessing their day-to-day -day life as they go shopping and they get a pizza and they go out. You, right. What you are doing so, is watching a story. And if there is no conflict, there's no story. So to turn this into advice, you want to find a conflict generator because unless you're doing a if you're doing a series you certainly will need a conflict generator if you're doing a one-time story one novel that follows the life of one person and the person around that person then maybe you don't need a conflict generator you're just chronicling this how they deal um, with a conflict yeah how that how this when this conflict lands at their feet what they discover about themselves how they find strength they didn't know they had to overcome this and conflict. it can be a mundane conflict in the sense that the book i'm writing at the minute about a woman named ivy <coughs> the conflict is her husband leaves her well not just that she loses no her no job, like, there's other things obviously but the start it the, the the snap that causes it is she you know, her husband leaves her so then her conflict the story we are following is how this woman you know, discovers a new life and goes through the pain, the heartache, discovering a new life, becoming a new person. And that's the conflict. And the sea level conflict, because you've got, you know, conversation with her family about what she should do, conversation with her friends about what we should do. Everyone has opinions. She's got to look for a new life. She's got to find a new home to live in. Sea level conflict and then the arcing conflict. And that's a, a, a sort of small level compared to, say, Supernatural right. or Firefly because it's mundane world. And you wouldn't really get a TV show out of Ivy's no, you wouldn't. situation. You'd get, you'd need to, if you were going to establish a series, then that's where you need your, your generator. You need a conflict generator, which is to say, in urban fantasy things, it's easier because you have a psychic who gets visions, like an yep. angel. Yep. You have a hell mouth, you, a hell mouth like in Buffy. You know, you have supernatural, you have a father's journal and, and, and news reports of weird goings on. You, you, you can have a conflict generator yeah, very easily. For example, like you've got law shows. 
um, the, oh yeah, law shows and medical shows. Medical shows. Medical shows are a, and law shows built in conflict generator. And of course, police shows. Because yeah. You've got the case of the week, the monster yeah. of the week, the, the freak sick of the week, person of the week, whatever it is. The, yeah, the, the case of the week in a, in a legal sense. So those are all ways that that as a as a controller of conflict, if you like, that's your job, is to create conflict and throw it at your characters. Um, the for the single novel, yeah. It's, you need it, a it can story. Be literally anything. But if but, you're just telling scenes, like I think people will just write scenes. Like, oh, I've got this character and they go to school. So I'm going to write them going off to university or school and yeah, I'm going to talk yeah. about what they do. Fine, but nobody will care. Yeah, so you, you might care. You say you found that easy to do before you knew how to tell stories. Yeah, I would just write the, a life. Oh, this would happen. It's believable. This would happen. I don't find it easy at all to write without conflict. In fact, without conflict, I, I pretty much can't. Um, yeah. It's, because I don't understand why anybody would care. <laughs> this, is, this is something I didn't necessarily think people would care. But I had to train myself out of writing things because I'm like, well, this is believable. This would happen. Mm. Just because it's believable and it would happen, you're not going to write every time they go for a wee. You, you don't yeah. have to just write so the, the scenes, things that might happen. The scenes that I find difficult as a, as a novelist um, rather than a screenwriter, because that's a different discipline slightly but as a novelist if you're trying to connect the dramatic moments yeah and there are for it to feel real there need to be some um, it's not an episode of 24 it's not an episode of 24 <laughs> you it's, have to have some downtime the shield maze books are closer to that because they're always sort of dealing with you know human traffickers and it's it happens fast but even then if if it's the the time between you know the dramatic thing happening and the next dramatic thing starting and it has to there has to be some time because they're not it's yeah. not 24 it's not um, you've got to have downtime but you can have your scene level conflict in your downtime you have if you've got um well like for instance the film that we are working on at the minute there's downtime between the scary and the you know the dramatic what are we going to do tonight well, it's it's easy. You have some characters who want to do one thing and some who want to do the other thing. And then you've got scene level conflict because they have to have that conversation. They have to decide what they're going to do that night. But also the, they disagree. The, with writing Hollowhood, we specifically created a mundane emotional conflict, not mundane to the people it Yeah, uh, a, a human non-supernatural. But a, a story conflict that when you're watching the film, you can invest in before and while you're sort of... Being but that either. romance, that will they, won't they, um, become a you know, become a relationship again? It's a breakup, getting back together situation. It's infused in every single scene. So if nothing is going on, yeah, you've in terms of the drama of the whole story, yeah, and, the um, scene has got something rich and conflicting. And with regards to advice, conflicty, conflicty is fine. With regards to advice. Um, sometimes, for example, you've got your emotional conflict, um, and in this case, it's Penny and Olivia. They were former partners, and they separated because of their goal, their life, taking them in different directions. And so that is sort of over over the top of everything that happens in the in the film that hasn't got to do with the scary side of it. Yeah. So you have opportunities to have the conflict examined by the side characters, so that yeah. it, it's the conflict is still affecting people. It's still driving the action, um, and it is also revealing who the other characters yeah, are. Yeah, their, per their, their take personal on... take on it, the way it yeah. affects them, the, the, the way it makes them consider their own lives. Yeah, because it if, shows you who they are. If you were to make a documentary of a weekend away, even if around the midpoint some scary shit started happening and some of them maybe died, the first half would probably be really boring. Yeah. Um, and so our job, your job as a writer, our job as the writer of this make story... Make it not boring. ...is to make it not boring at all, because you never, ever, ever want it to be boring. And the way you make and it not boring is with conflict. Yeah, always. And not, you know... It might be tempting to be just having people constantly fight all the time, but that's not it. It's not that, it's, it's just that different opinions. Even if people are in agreement, they are in agreement about the, you know, the overall conflict. And so the conflict's still in the mind and we're still thinking about the conflict. As long as you can get people to think about the having, conflict, having then opinions. the conflict is still alive on those pages, yeah. you know, in those minutes on the screen. Exactly. So, having, having opinions, have something that people can talk about, something that's happening. Otherwise, they're just like, oh, it's a nice day. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's go and get drunk and quote The Simpsons for two hours. Isn't Which going to be is, is real, is believable. <laughs> but it's again, it's not drama. Um, the drama has to be conflict. <laughs> yeah. Focused. Yeah. And if it's not, then it's it's it needs to be improved. Um, yeah. And that's your job. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's. It's important to look at your writing and if you can see a scene where everyone just agrees and they just live a life, you you need to either that scene or make it alive with conflict yeah, and, and keep it. Trust your instincts, you might feel like you've already kind of had this conflict in this story. If you've got a scene level conflict, you've got a, an argument about the right way to go. You might feel like, well, I'm repeating myself because I need conflict. So think about it, develop it, let the conflict evolve and the people who've already begun um, opposing each other um, yeah. and they, they can start to develop away from their original points and it just keeps it interesting. Yeah, I agree. So thank you very much for watching our video about what is conflict. Um, I hope this has helped you. If you have any thoughts or questions about what we've been talking about, anything you don't quite understand or you want it developing more, comment below and we'll try and do a video um, answering your question. If you're a YouTuber, obviously we'll give your channel a shout out. So do that and we will say hello to you. Um, if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel, you will help us grow, which helps us bringing more writing advice to you. I love Baileys, it was very good. It was good. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Come and talk to us on social media. There'll be links to everything down below. So go and have a look at that and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye. All right, bye.